Okay, you know the CRT filter that comes with the default mini Nintendo emulator that's really cool and works mainly on the original 30 games? I'm going to show you how to make this work on other emulators and games. You're going to need the Clovershell HMOD and Client. You're going to want to open up your Hacksie. And you're going to copy the Clovershell HMOD into your user mods folder. Then you'll go to install extra modules. You'll install Clovershell with the FEL mode where you hold power and reset. You guys probably remember when it used to take a good 45 minutes to an hour to flash all the games on the mini Nintendo using FEL mode. Seemed like such a long time ago. Now you get flash in about one or two minutes flat. You're also going to need the Clovershell client, which you're going to want to extract and copy into your C drive. I've already done this. Now once this uh, Clovershell HMOD is installed completely, you want to have HackG closed. You cannot have it open if you want to access Clovershell HMOD. I've already put the files on there that I need. I pulled them from the Mini Nintendo, but I'm going to show you how it's done. And you want to make a backup folder. So once you pull these two files here that I show you in the next minute, you're going to want to copy them into the backup folder. This way you could copy them back and re-upload the originals if you have issues. So I'm going to go to my command prompt. And uh, I'll show you what I mean by command prompts. You have this Clovershell client here, and you try to open it like any other program. Just opens up and closes instantly. You may have had programs like this over the years and not understood why. The reason why is because it is DOS-based command-driven. So you have to use DOS prompts in order to actually work the program. In order to do this, you're going to search for CMD, which is your command prompt. I generally right click on it and run as administrator. And right now it is in my C drive Windows System 32. That's where it generally defaults to. If you do change directory back back, which is a common IRC dust prompt, especially for FTP servers, the old school ones, I'm going back a directory. I'm going to do it one more time to go back to my main root drive. Now I'm going to my Clovershell folder that I made, which is on my root drive. I'm just going to change directory, space, Clovershell. Now I'm officially in that directory. The commands I need, I already typed out to make things easier. Because you could just copy and paste them in there. But you need the retro R Clover file, and you need the scanline GLSL file in order to amend the perimeters you need to enable this CRT filter that is pretty much blocked by Hatchy and is only intended for the original NES emulator. So anyways, I'm going to pull these files off of the mini Nintendo using the Clovershell, which is awesome. So I'm doing a Clovershell pull, bin retro R Clover, and you have to do them a certain way to pull them and push them. You can see how the apostrophes are. The apostrophes are on the original directory when you want to pull the file, but it reverts where it's actually at the end. So I'm naming my directory that I want to pull the file from, then the file, if I want to take the file off of it. But if I want to put it back, I name the file, then I choose the directory I want to send it to. Seems a little complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. So I'm copying this command line here. I'm in my Clover Show directory. So I just downloaded that RetroArt Clover file. It says 100% done. Now I'm going to take off the Scanline GLSL file as well. That's 100% done as well. Now that you have these two files, you want to make sure you back them up into your backup folder. 
That way you could copy them right back into this main root directory of Clovershell and re-upload them to the mini Nintendo and fix any issues. You could also uninstall Hacksy and redo it that way too, but this is a lot quicker. So anyways, I'm opening up my uh, file that I backed up for my RetroArch Clover. I'm using my Notepad++. If you look at lines 56 and 57 where it says allow scan lines only for simple systems and then allow CRT right underneath it, these you're going to want to delete and then save the file. I've already done this so I do not need to do this again. So I'm going to open the file here and verify that the file are still deleted. See line 56 and 57 are officially deleted so I'm fine with that. Now I have the code to enable CRT here. And I'll make this available to all of you guys. I'm selecting all of this and I'm copying it. Now I'm opening up my scanline GOSL with notepad. And I'm gonna select it all, delete it, and I'm gonna paste the new code in there and save it. And then close it. Now these two files here that I downloaded, I backed them up before I changed them. Now I'm going to re-upload the amended files back to the mini Nintendo. And I'm going to use the push command. Where I choose the file first and then the directory. So first I'm going to push the Clover, RetroArch Clover file to the mini Nintendo. And that's done. Now I'm going to push the scanline GLSL file. And there's a third file that you can pull and push, the RetroArch config file. That's so you could enable and disable overscan, but you could do this easily through RetroArch options as I will show you, so this is really not necessary. So I'm pushing the seller file back onto there. That's done. Now I'm going to open up my hashi. And I'm just going to sync the games. Which would be quick. And I'm sharing an HDMI cable for my computer and a mini Nintendo, so I'm going to switch and there's going to be a slight delay. But I want to show you how the CRT takes effect. Normally I would separate this into a part one, part two video, but I'm just going to combine them. And if anything goes wrong, oh well. Now I'm going to switch the cable real quick. And sometimes you turn the system on and the controller won't work. So you just want to turn it back off and right back on, and then the controller will be fine again. So I'll show you the next step of getting the CRT filter running. I'm going into my Nintendo directory. And I'm going to open up a random game, let's we'll say 1942. Then I'm going to do my select plus start for RetroArch. I'm going into my settings, then my video. And this part right here where it says crop overscan reload, the most current hashes have this disabled by default. So that's the RetroArch configuration file that you can download and change. But all I do is just enable it right here. You could just turn it on, like right here. Then you want to back out. 
quick menu, restart, resume. Now I officially have CRT on 1942. Old school tube TV CRT. And this actually works on other emulators too because of what I did in my file changes. So I'm going to go to another system. We'll say an arcade game. And when I do testing, I just keep it in an unsorted folder. You almost always have an unsorted folder and you end up having to delete it and delete the recycle bin. I just leave the unsorted folder there and just throw my test games into it. It makes things a lot easier. So I'm opening up Shinobi Arcade. And I have my CRT filter here. Now here's what's really cool about this. I'm going to my main menu. And with the adjustments I made to the files, I can go up to my display. And by changing CRT filter here, outside of RetroArch, it's changing it in the emulators and games themselves. Now there's only one drawback to this right now. It might require a slight rewrite of the code, but Genesis Plus GX does not work really well with this scan line. I'm not sure if a few other emulators here and there are. I'm going to test them all, but... I started using Pico Drive instead, and I just command lined my Mega Drive, Sega Master System, etc., to a 32x extension. And that's how I uh, have Pico Drive. Pico Drive really is a better emulator, so there's really no lost thing with uh, Genesis Plus. But, anyways, this is how you do the scan lines. And if you want to replace the files, you can just do the commands with the backup files. So hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy having original default mini Nintendo CRT filter with everything else. It's freaking awesome.